Hello, my name is Tori Merritt and I'm a photographer and content creator based in Seattle, Washington. This video is going to be my initial review for Dehancer for DaVinci Resolve. I want this to be a helpful review for anyone who's been kind of on the fence about whether or not to download this plugin, um, whether it's the free trial version or to purchase uh, a license key. I want this video to actually include very practical examples of how I actually use the, the plugin and how I integrate it into my color workflow. I want to just give you guys some concrete examples of throwing some different footage at this plugin and seeing how it handles everything that I test it with. Um, whether that be different film stocks, different film prints, um, different places to put place the node in, in your color managed workflow. And um, I'm excited to get into this, so let's get started. So just to bring anyone up to speed, Dehancer is a film emulation plugin that mimics some of the distinct qualities of motion picture film characteristics in both general characteristics and specific one-to-one -one film stock emulations as well as film print emulations like Kodak 2383 or Fuji 3513. Some quick examples of what motion picture film characteristics actually are would be color harmony and split toning, filmic contrast roll-off and compression, color density, grain, halation, bloom, and then things like gate weave, film breath, and other stuff. Now that we're all caught up on the basic premise of the plugin, I'd like to get into some concrete workflow examples. To use Dehancer, it's helpful to have a basic understanding of what a color managed workflow is. And I can briefly kind of mention what that is, but if you want more info on that, there's a ton of really, really great education and uh, tutorials online. But I will definitely try to summarize the color management choices that I make as we go along. Okay, so the first example is this nice blue hour scene that I shot a while back. There's just a really nice monochromatic kind of color tone to the whole environment that you get in blue hour with the really interesting kind of like accents of warmer tones um, from the last bit of light on the horizon reflecting off of these buildings and skyscrapers. Overall, I just felt like this scene was a perfect match for some film emulation. But before we get into some of the choices I made in Dehancer, let's just do a quick overview of some of the color management for this clip because it's similar to um, some of the other examples as well. So I used a color space transform going from um, input color space, right? Sony S Gamut 3 Cine, Sony S Log 3 into DaVinci Wide Gamut, that's my working color space. Um, couple adjustments at the clip level. None of that is super important. I want to kind of keep speeding through this review and not get too bogged down. Um, and then at the output stage, I'm basically taking um, right here when this color space transform happens. I'm going from DaVinci Wide Gamut back into S-Log actually, so that I can use one of my favorite LUTs, which is an S-Log 3 to Rec. 709 LUT. Um, that Rec. 709 is being fed into Dehancer, and I've heard some uh, professional colorists, um, even uh, there's a guy named Darren Mostyn, I believe. Uh, he's a YouTuber, a great colorist, and I think he's even mentioned that Dehancer works pretty well, um, even better in some scenarios when you are feeding it Rec. 709. So now that we have that out of the way, um, Let's get into what film um, stock and print emulation I chose for this blue hour scene. So if we go into the effects on Dehancer, we've got Kodak Vision 3 250D, which I think looks amazing on this footage. And if we just tick that off real quick here, let's actually take that off and take off a bunch of these settings. Um, we'll leave on, yeah, let's just take it all off. On some of these, you'll notice a big change and on some of them you won't. So this is what was being fed into Dehancer. And then let's just kind of slowly go through some of these additions. The film print adds a ton, I'm sure you're aware. It kind of deepens and darkens everything. And That is where we are after some pretty quick and painless um, film emulation. You gotta be happy with that outcome. So that is all at the group post clip. That's everything off. 
and then everything on. I think that looks amazing. Um, we'll do another quick before and after wipe for you right here. And uh, yeah, I'm super happy with that blue hour look. So for the second example, I wanted to go an entirely different direction and actually use some vlog footage from a trip I took to Berlin last August. There are bright and bold colors throughout the city, so I wanted to go for a colorful film look that can also be used for more of a bright, bold commercial look in the right circumstances. I'll get right down to it and show you guys what film stock, film print, and other settings in Dehancer I used on these. So here we are again in DaVinci and we've dialed in um, this kind of fun, bright, bold look with Dehancer. Um, and it's the same color management as I had in the last example. So let's just get straight to uh, what I used in Dehancer. So when I was choosing settings in the plugin to go with this kind of fun, bright, like vlog style footage in you know a beautiful city, lots of color, lots of people. Um, I opted for Kodak Ektar 100. Um, some of the characteristics just really fit the the mood I was going for, and I love how these turned out. I ended up going with the Fujifilm 3513 print film. Um, on this, I thought it paired really well. Um, if you want to see real quick, I can go to the 2383 that actually looks really good too um, but i think just the fuji brings out a little bit more of those greens and like is a little bit more tame yeah on those shadows like the shadows get more red and warm with the kodak uh, 2383 with the fuji stays a little brighter and a little bit more like the shadows kind of stay a little bit more neutral maybe a little bit more like cyan which I thought paired really well with like the sky, the reds, the yellows, um, the foliage. So then you just have like little tweaks to um, like things like film compression. It just like really helps rein in the dynamic range. Um, you've got things like messing a little bit with the expand tab. Um, I think that does a tremendous world of good. Just bringing like that sort of leveled down to where it looks more believable. Tiny little adjustments to things like shadow tone, bringing a little bit more coolness into the shadows. Pretty typical, you know, grain settings. And then once again, typical halation, fairly minimal. And um, I didn't actually put any bloom in this time. I found these particular adjustments in Dehancer to be really versatile. Like whether you have a shot like this, that's outdoor with some kind of hazy sunlight, um, people walking around, you know, whether you have like more overcast look with these bright buildings, just like looks really good. Even an interior scene, um, it look, just looks really warm and nostalgic. And of course you have to go in and do a little bit of color correction. You can't totally depend on the plugin to synchronize the look across these. That's not something that we have a ton of time to get into today, but it's fairly simple if you just go to the clip level and adjust things like white balance, exposure, highlights and shadows, different am amounts of saturation, all that kinds of stuff really um, help dial the look in on a per shot uh, level. So I just wanted to take a quick moment to say that if you're interested in purchasing the plugin for DaVinci Resolve, After Effects or Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, you can use code TORI10 for 10% off. Now let's get back to a few more examples. Okay, so this third example is from some recent footage I shot that has this kind of complementary color scheme and some really cool opportunities and making that really pop and just be on display. But I have a couple things I wanna to mention to you guys. The first thing I'd say is it's not necessarily always the best decision to do a ton of color correction and to make your image look like really, really great before it hits this Dehancer node. I've actually found that if you do too much color correction before you have the emulation turned on, it can kind of almost like overbake the footage. So a lot of times I'll go into Dehancer pretty soon in my kind of decision tree and I'll pick some profiles and then I'll do, with that turned on, I'll do some of my color correction underneath that. Cause let's, let's give you an example. Like if I turn the Dehancer node off, I feel like this footage just looks very unbalanced. Um, it looks cool, like it, I'm not saying it's necessarily wrong if you wanna go that direction, 
um, but I, it looks unbalanced to me. So if I were to balance this out and get the skin tones exactly where I wanted them and the backdrop exactly where I wanted, when that eventually goes and is fed to this dehancer emulation, um, this node, it might overbake. Like if we turn this on, you'll see how the skin kind of falls into place, at least for the look I was going for, more of that kind of cool toned, like deeper look. Um, so just something to note to note is don't necessarily overcorrect um, before you send the image to the dehancer node. The second tip is just to be really open-minded with testing and testing and experimenting with um, the plugin because for example, on this grade, um, I know I've been using I've been using a ton of like the 2383. Uh, on a bunch of my other grades lately, like probably 85% of them I use the 2383 um, print. On this one, I actually went with Kodak Endura glossy paper. I thought it looked amazing. Like if we switch this to 2383, it's, it's not the move on, on this grade in my opinion. It just looks, and the skin just doesn't look realistic to me. The backdrop looks overbaked. If we switch this back to Endura, I think it looks um, definitely stylized, but but really nice. And then as far as the um, the film stock, I use Kodak Pro Image 100, which is one I hadn't even used before. So it just goes to show that tip of like, be really willing to go in here and experiment. The more you experiment, the more you pair different film stocks with different film print emulations, even things down to like I had barely touched this setting in the past, the temperature compensation. Um, and yes, you could do that kind of upstream in your color correction, but just be be fluid and be like open to sometimes you do like a temperature adjustment in your at the clip level, right? Sometimes you do some of that correction there and sometimes it looks really good right on in the dehancer settings. So so yeah, just keep an open mind and be willing to go through all of these settings. Um, you'll see I, I adjusted the color head tab way more than I have in the other examples. Even the even the shadow tone and mid-tones tone, a um, little bit of film grain, even more minimal on this shot, bit of halation, bit of bloom. Um, but yeah, on this shot specifically, you'll notice like the Kodak Enduro Glossy looked insane, and that looked actually pretty poor on some of the other examples. So don't don't just you know use a setting once and be like I don't like it. Um, it might look great on another shot that in previously it looked terrible on another shot. So yeah, the main point there is just don't be afraid to experiment heavily. The more experimentation you do, the more you're gonna learn. Okay guys, so I had a few more sections planned for this video. I really wanted to go in depth on the pros and cons of the software, different features that I wish that they might implement soon, um, the price, how does it stack up against um, other plugins, is there enough value for the, for the investment, that kind of stuff, right? But these screen recording type videos always take up a lot more time than um, I plan for. And I'm a small channel and just starting out and I don't know, you know, how many of you that are stumbling onto this have even seen my page before. So before I turn this into a 30 minute video, we'll go ahead and stop it here, leave some questions um, unanswered for another video. Um, I'm definitely wanting to do more on this subject and I even have some more planned with Dehancer photo editing. Um, they've got uh, a, a Lightroom and Photoshop plugin and even an iPhone app. So, so there's room to cover some of that stuff coming up in the future. Um, but I just want to thank everyone if you made it this far into the video. Hopefully there was some value here for you guys. And uh, I'm still learning too. We're all learning here on this YouTube community. But I really appreciate you guys tuning in and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.